Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 15 of our one bedroom house series. And today what we're going to do is an electrical plan. So you see, we are get on top of things. We are move with the project. All right. So don't move a muscle. If you're new here, we've been doing a one bedroom house from scratch and we're trying to produce all the drawings that are necessary for approval. We are going to produce views and we're going to also put them on sheets and we're going to print them and we're going to maybe I'll submit it. What do you think about that? I could actually do a video on all of that, but um, we'll see. We'll see if you want me to do it. Just comment it down below or hit the like button. We we'll see. We we'll see how that goes. Um, now remember that I'm doing these drawings based on Jamaican standards. So the way I do these drawings, you know, it might be a little or might be very, very different depending on where you're from. But I do hope that um, you learn something nonetheless and that you will find some value in these videos. If you actually learn something, you could just, you know, hit the like button and consider, just consider subscribe. All right. Respect. In order to do an electrical plan, it's important that you have some background information, some understanding of how electricity works, electrical components or devices. You need to have a background knowledge on all of these things. Also, if you've never seen an electrical plan, it would be a good idea to see what one looks like. So you could just go on Google type in um, electrical plans and just look at some images and you will notice that you have a floor plan with you know some symbols all over the place representing different things and you might see like things connecting to other things and so on and so forth try to understand what is happening on an electrical plan read all the notes on the side of the page and also get familiar with the different symbols that are represented on an electrical plan all right that's very very important all right so here i have provided a PDF with a list of symbols or rather electrical symbols that we're going to be using on this electrical plan. And of course, this list is very limited in comparison to the amount of symbols that are available to use. Now, for this little one bedroom house, we don't need a lot of stuff. In fact, this list is probably too much because I'm definitely not going to be placing all of these symbols or components within this uh, little tiny bedroom house all right so of course you can download this pdf um, in the link in the description make sure that you get yourself familiar with the different symbols for instance this one represents chandelier um, you have uh, emergency light unit this one represents switches and i wanted to kind of explain this one a little bit so a regular switch would look like this that's like the light switch which would mean single pole switch all right now if you have a double pole toggle switch then you would put a two where the x is if you have a three-way toggle switch you would put a three there if you have a dimmer switch you'd put a d there all right so these can become important as you do your drawing depending on what your project requires likewise when you go up to outlets or electrical plugs um when you have a regular outlet it's normal but when you add a subscript to it then it means that that subscript represent whatever is over here all right so for instance a ground fall circuit interrupter this one would be placed in like your kitchen or in the bathroom where there might be uh, water getting in contact with electrical equipment like your hair dryer or your blender stuff like that you have waterproof as well these are mostly used outdoors so all of these um, abbreviations would go underneath the plug to represent respectively and then you have other symbols like usb outlet television outlet you have panels um, you have even security cameras all right so a nice little list here that we can use on a wide array of projects so go ahead download them if you don't have your symbols make sure that you draw them in autocad so that you'll have them to use of course i am going to go over into autocad now where i actually have these symbols ready and waiting to go so of course i have made them into blocks i'm going to be using them 
in our project. So that's this drawing. I'm going to actually go into the one bedroom house project now. All right, so let's do that. So we're going to go over to our project navigator and this is where all of our drawing exists. Um, we have our construct, we have our views. We have already created some views, but we had a couple more constructs that we needed to create and um, such as the electrical uh, construct. So we're going to be doing that now. So what we're going to do is to right click on here and we're going to go down to new and we're going to say construct and we're going to call this electrical layout. Now, if you had multiple levels, for instance, if you have ground floor, second floor, third floor, then you would need to have a, an electrical layout for each level. All right. So you would have probably level one here and then you'd create another construct and call it level two because each level would have a different um, layout. All right. And then we're going to select the level that would, we're going to be applying this to. So it's going to be the ground level because this is just a single uh, floor building. And we're going to open the drawing. So let's click OK. And as you can see that we have the construct over here being created. And then we're also inside of that drawing, electrical layout. All right, moving on from this, it's a blank drawing. So obviously we need to get the floor plan inside of here. How do we do that? We go to our ground floor construct and we're going to right click and say XREF overlay. All right. Now we have our floor plan in the drawing. What we need now also is our fixtures. All right. So we're going to right click overlay. Now we can see where everything is so we can properly lay out our electrical devices. Okay. So I'm going to minimize this because I don't need that anymore. And then I'm going to actually turn off a couple of these layers because I don't want to see them. So I'm going to click on this little guy here called freeze. I'm going to freeze that and I'm going to also freeze this. And I think I will keep everything else for now. All right, so let's leave it there. The next thing we're going to do is to create some layers. All right, so if you don't know where your layer property is, it's right here. Click on that guy and it should bring up. All right, so here's my layer property and I'm going to actually create some layers. So I'm going to call this new layer E light. Make that green. Of course, you can choose your own color. Um, that's, no, that's not a hard rule right there. I'm going to call this one E power and I'm going to explain to you why I'm giving, uh, why I'm creating these layers and why do I call it uh, what it is. I'm going to create another one, call it E data. By the way, the E stands for electrical. All right. And I'm going to make this magenta. Line width is 0 0.09. Then I'm going to create one last one. I'm going to call it E dash wire. And I'm going to make this orange. And I'm going to make it instead of continuous, I'm going to make it dashed. All right. So why do I create these layers? Basically, what I want to do is to put all the lighting fixtures or lighting devices on the lighting layer, all power devices such as the uh, outlets and the panel boxes. I want to put those on the power layer. Everything that has to do with data. This was spelled incorrectly, such as like, uh, you know, Internet, Digicel, Cable and Wireless, Verizon. All of those guys would go on this layer and then wire. Basically, anything that is being connected by wire, I would use this layer to connect them. All right. So that's it. So let's go over now. So what we want to do is to get our blocks over here into our electrical drawing. What do you think is the easiest way to do it? Of course, the easiest way would be to just copy the whole thing and bring it over. But what if I told you that there was a more efficient and effective way to do it? And in order for this to work, what you have to do is to make sure that you have all of your blocks in one drawing. Okay, and if you notice, my blocks are named properly. Um, if you click on any one of these blocks, they are properly named. So make sure you name them and you give them a base point. So any one of my blocks that you click on, you'll see that I have a base point on them. Once you have them all in one drawing, you save that drawing, save it, go over to your electrical plan, and we're going to open the blocks palette. So type in the command blocks palette. Here it is. Click on it and it will bring up your blocks palette. And here, as you can see, we have three tabs on the 
left here we have current drawing showing you all the blocks that are available in this current drawing we have recent which is showing you whatever you have used recently and other drawings now if you notice i already have these loaded in but if you didn't have anything here what you would do is to click on the three dots and find your drawing that has all the blocks inside of it which would be this guy over here you would then go ahead and press open but of course I would have already loaded it in. So it is in and actually I made some settings changes down here, which I will be explaining in a couple of seconds. The good thing now is that we can use all the blocks from this drawing inside of this drawing. And the beautiful thing about that is, let's say I drew this one incorrectly, but guess what? I would have already placed it all over in this drawing. Instead of deleting all of them and redoing it, what I would do is to go over to this drawing, make the change to that block right here, save it and it would automatically update in this drawing. So that's the beautiful thing about doing it this way. Now, if you notice down here, I changed the scale, I made it uniform and I set it to 25 because initially it was at one. And if I were to place a, a block on one, then you notice it was very small. So you have to increase the scale to a comfortable number. I use 25, you know, that will look somewhat reasonable on your drawing. So as you can see now, that looks good. And then I select rotation because when I place the block, I want to have the ability to rotate it. And then I also have repeat placement which means that when i place one outlet i can go ahead and keep placing the others i don't have to come back to this um, panel here and so on and so forth so that's what we really want to do here all right now before we place anything i'm going to actually select the layer that i'm going to work with first so first we're going to be placing our power devices which would include outlets and panel boxes. So the first thing I'm going to place is a panel box, which is this guy here. And I'm going to use a flush one. So that means this one will be flushing with the wall and it's a 240 volt. For most households in Jamaica, we don't use more than 240. And I'm going to place my panel right here in the kitchen. Um, it's not the best location guys, I know, but for a house like this where I don't even have much space, um, that's probably one of the best places to put it. You don't want to put it where you're going to have high traffic and you don't want to put it where kids and so on can grab it. Um, but in this case, this is just a one bedroom house and I would assume that mostly adults would be using this uh, one bedroom house. Again, it all depends on the purpose of the building. All right, the next thing we're gonna place are some um, duplex outlet. And duplex is the regular plug that you see on your wall every day. Okay, guys, so we're gonna drop some duplex. Let's start in the bedroom. You know, you have to place one beside the bed because guess what? If you don't, you know the phone now will get charged. So that's that. All right, we're going to place one underneath the uh, the computer desk. And if you notice, I kind of place it in the middle of the wall or in the middle of the window. Likewise for that one. It doesn't always have to be like that. You know, it's up to you. Now, if you notice, I can rotate when I place. And that is why we select the rotation option down here. If you notice, I, I, I want to make it straight down i can turn on the ortho mode to get that function all right so i have three outlets in this room i don't think i need anything else i'm gonna place one on the veranda or the porch of course we're gonna be making that one waterproof in a little bit i'm gonna place another one right on this side of the couch and i'm gonna place another one on this side of the couch too maybe what i'll do is place this one no yeah i'm gonna place this one here i'm gonna place one behind that and i'm gonna delete this one then i'm gonna place one here for the tv okay you know we have to plug in the tv i'm gonna place one here for the refrigerator i'm gonna place one here just in case we have an electric stove and then i'm gonna place one on the countertop all right i'm going to also place one here for all the guys who like to shave and all the ladies who like to blow their hair you need a plug no so right so i think we have enough outlets at the moment what we need to do now is to make sure that we put the appropriate subscript like this one here we would put a g here to indicate that this is a ground fault circuit all right so let's 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 go and copy that um 
da, 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 the G. I'm gonna copy this. Rather, Control C, go over, Control V. Of course, it's coming in very small. Put it on the correct layer. And I'm gonna scale it up a little bit. Let's make it 25, enter. And I'm gonna put that right there. I'm gonna be copying this now. Um, put it also in the kitchen. Let's see if we had one for, um, we didn't have one for stove, but we have one for refrigerator called ref. So we're gonna put, put the ref one there. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm going to put REF and uh, I'm going to copy that. And we're going to put a waterproof one here. All right, so yeah, that looks just about good. We have our panel here and that's that for our power system. We're gonna move over to lighting and then we're gonna be placing some light. Now it's up to you guys to de decide how you and where you want to place your uh, lights and what type of light you wanna place and that kind of thing. If you notice, we have fluorescent, we have wall mounted lights and so on and so forth. So it's really up to you to decide what you want. I'm going to start in the bedroom where I'm going to be placing a regular light um, right in the center of, um, of the room like that. And then I can decide if I want to rotate it. Of course, it doesn't matter at this point. It's a circle. And I also want to place a wall mounted one somewhere. I don't know where, maybe right here. So place it at, in the middle of the this wall. Okay, I'm going to place another wall mounted one inside of the bathroom. I don't think we need more than one right there. And do I need to place any more? I need a wall mounted outside here. And I'm gonna put another wall mounted one on the outside so that we can see outside at night. I don't think I need any more wall mounted. I'm gonna put a regular one in the kitchen. All right, in this area, I'm gonna be putting some recessed light. So I chose recess, I put one here and I'm gonna put Another one here. And I'm gonna put this light over top of the uh, this thing here. All right, so that's it guys. And what I would go ahead and do is to kind of center these. So right click, center, enter twice. I want it to be centered be between these walls. And I also want it to be centered between that. So I kind of just center it in the middle of the room. I'm going to do the same thing for the kitchen. Center, enter twice, and then I select the span of the room. I'm going to do the same thing again. So that would be the center of the, the kitchen. These, I kind of want these to be spaced evenly. So I'm going to choose space evenly. Hit enter twice, and then I'm gonna draw a line from here to here. And so they are spaced evenly in the living area. Beautiful. So I have all my lights in place. Now I need to place my switches. So here we have our single pole switch. All right, now where you place your switch is important. For instance, if the moment you step inside the house, you should have a switch to turn on the light in the house, so we need a switch there. But I also need a switch to turn on the outside lights. So I'm gonna put two more switches on this wall. I'm gonna put one up here as well. So one is for the living room, one is for this light, and the other one is for this one outside. Then I'm gonna put two switches here, one for the bathroom and one for this guy right here. Then I'm gonna put one in the bedroom. If you notice where I'm putting them very close to the door because normally as you enter into a room, you want to find the switch. All right, so bear that in mind as you place your switches. All right, I'm gonna place another one uh, in the kitchen, maybe right beside this panel here. And this one would be for the that light. And then I'm gonna be placing another one for, for the outside 
light again. All right, so that's all the switches that we need. Um, actually, I need two switches here. So I'm gonna copy this. One for this and one for that. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna put a D here. And I'm gonna also place this on the lighting layer. All right, if you notice guys, this video is getting long and that's my problem. I'm gonna keep this at one switch. I'm gonna use one switch to turn on the outside light. But I think we have all the switches we need so far. Um, yeah. And last, well not lastly, second to lastly, <laughs> we're gonna add some data stuff. So for instance, um, I'm gonna be adding a TV, a TV there, TV. So that's where Digicel will run their stuff. And then we're gonna have, we don't use telephone stuff again. I mean, you could put a security camera somewhere. I don't know where, maybe, maybe, right, I don't know. No, no, put it, put it right, put it, da, 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 da. put it right here. If you want, I'm just messing around with this right now. What else do I, could I place? Um, thermostat, smoke detector. We need a smoke detector. All right, so we're gonna place a smoke detector in the living area, maybe like right here. We're gonna place one in the bedroom, maybe towards the door. And I don't think we need more than that. That's it for our devices. I'm gonna be placing some wires now, and usually we only connect, what? Oh, wire. Usually we only connect um, light switches to the lights. All right, and this is what is required in Jamaica. So in other countries, you might need to connect the plugs to the circuit to show which plug go to which panel and all of that kind of stuff. For this, we're just gonna connect the switches to the bulbs. So normally I would use arcs to connect them but you can actually use spy line as well it all depends on what suits you best i'm going to be using a combination of both um so i'm going to be connecting this switch here to this bulb and of course that switch turns on both bulbs then i'll be doing the same thing again and i'll be connecting this switch to this outside light then I'm gonna be using a spy line here now to connect this one to the one all the way around the back. Um, kind of just running it outside so that, you know, we can see it clearly. Of course, in real life, we're not gonna be running the wire outside, but just for clarity, all right? So that's good for that. I'm gonna be running, um, connecting this one to this. I'm gonna be connecting this one here to this. And this one will be connected to that. And this dimmer switch here would be connected to this. And then this guy here would be connected to that. Do we have any more switches? Did I leave any out? I don't think so. All right, guys, so as you can see, we are done with our electrical plan. Again, make sure that you do some research and understand how and where to place your devices and make sure that it actually makes sense. You don't know what you do, you don't just want to throw things all over the place. So what I'm going to do now is to kind of unload these so that we can see what we have here and then of course we can turn stuff on, on and off so i can turn off the power to focus on lighting i can turn off uh, lighting and i can turn off data stuff like that so this is what our electrical system will look like and we're gonna save now remember we do not add annotations to this drawing because this is just a construct all right so we're not going to be adding any annotations here I'm gonna reload these and leave it 
right there all right guys so that wraps it up for this video um i do have these blocks available um the cad file that is on my patreon page so for those of you who don't know i have a patreon page that you can check out i will be dropping a lot of cad files over there especially those that i do on videos i'll post them over there so you can get them for download and also if you'd like to support the channel uh, you like what you see and you enjoy the videos you get a lot of value from it then you know feel free to support the channel on my patreon page all the links are in the description so definitely check it out and don't forget to hit the like button don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to follow me on instagram all right so take care of yourself and i'll see you in the next video Oh, 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 oh,